Thank you for that warm welcome and the trust that uh, you, my colleagues, have placed in me. It is a true honor and a responsibility that I do not take lightly. Governor McCrory, I appreciate you being here with us today. Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest, uh, we appreciate your presiding and your presiding over the upcoming session. Uh, Justice Paul Newby and members of the judiciary, we appreciate your participation and your help in, uh, uh, in this uh, ceremony. The uh, members of the Junior Army ROTC Color Guard from John Motley Moorhead High School from Eden, North Carolina, my hometown, uh, I appreciate their participation in the service. Uh, my wife, Pat, my son, Kevin, uh, my grandchildren, uh, Jackson and Emily, uh, and my daughter-in-law, Amber, I thank you for, for being here and for your support uh, over the years. And uh, all of us understand the importance of our families and the support we have from our families in order to enable us uh, to be able to serve in public office. So, uh, so I thank you, and, and I know all of our colleagues thank, uh, thank their members, uh, their family members as well. Today, we renew the fight for reform that started two years ago. When the voters sent a new General Assembly to Raleigh to change the way our government operates. For too many years, North Carolina tried to tax and spend its way to prosperity. For too many years, North Carolina lost jobs, lost businesses, failed to educate many of our children, and struggled to compete. Our leaders had lost their way, and our state lost its place as the leader of the South and the envy of the nation. We vowed two years ago in this chamber to begin fixing those problems. And we've made great progress in just the short period of time. Today, that work continues. Senators, as we make tough decisions, I want us to be thinking about the families out there struggling to make ends meet, sitting around their kitchen tables balancing their checkbooks, saving for retirement or for the college education for their children. Think of them as we craft bills and cast votes. Ask yourself, how can we help them create a better life? How can we work together to help small businesses become more successful? How can we work together to help working families take home more in their paychecks? Ask yourself, how can we help their children get a better education, regardless of the political consequences? Ask yourself how we, as a body, can come together to help our towns and communities compete in order to create jobs and grow our economy. The voters have placed in our hands enormous trust and responsibility we have the opportunity to set sweeping policy to change the direction of North Carolina and to make a real and lasting difference. To my Republican colleagues, we must show our constituents, this state and this country, that there is a real difference between a Washington Republican and a North Carolina Republican. North Carolina Republicans deliver. We kept our word and we act on the promises we've made. We made that clear last session. We cut taxes, unleashing private enterprise to grow our economy and create new jobs. We cut government red tape and bureaucracy. We began the long process of retooling our public education system, our public education system to make it more focused on delivering positive results for our children. Those were great achievements, but they were only the beginning. These next two years, Republicans and Democrats must set the bar even higher. With Governor McCrory, his administration, and leaders in every branch of government, we will reform our old and outdated tax code. Today, our tax system slows economic growth, kills jobs, and hurts businesses. It's one of the single greatest roadblocks to our recovery, and we will not stop until it's improved. We will continue making government more efficient and more responsive. 
Taxes on working families are still way too high. Regulations on our job creators are still way too cumbersome. And we have an obligation to change that. We will never back down from the effort to reform our public schools. No child, no child in North Carolina should be forced to attend a failing school. And while we are committed to rewarding and recognizing our best teachers, no teacher should be guaranteed a job if they fail in their responsibility to educate our children. Every month, every week, every day that we accept mediocrity, another child slips through the cracks. We will move on this critical if issue, and we will move quickly. Most of you know me. I grew up in a working class home. My dad worked, for, worked with his hands. Throughout my life, I've had to work hard as many of you have. I worked multiple jobs while raising a family to work through college and through law school. My wife Pat and I both understand what it takes to make ends meet. We've seen firsthand how hard work and determination makes anything possible. Education reform, tax reform, regulatory reform, they are lofty goals. But if we work hard, we can change our state. We can make it more competitive, more successful, and help the families of North Carolina. I know many North Carolinians have lost hope. They feel stuck. They wonder if they'll ever get ahead. Each and every day that we walk into this chamber, remember, we have an obligation to those in our state who are working hard and doing their best to provide for their families. Now is the time that we, as leaders, roll up our sleeves and get to work. We will not waste this great opportunity. Will there be tough battles? You bet. Will we have to make decisions that take us outside of our comfort zone? Yes. But it's the right thing for us to do. And no matter how difficult or daunting the task, we must keep our eyes on what's best for the people of this great state. I want to thank you for the trust that you've reposed in me. I want to thank you for the opportunity to serve you and for the opportunity to serve the people of the state of North Carolina. And may God bless this body and the people of our great state. Thank you.